My name is Payada and you can know me as an organizer of international and intermezzo championships. I would like to share with you my experiences with two-player game of Through the Ages. Some of these concepts and strategies can be also applied in a three-player and four-player games, but main focus is on a two-player. So let's dive in! There are four types of resources in Through the Ages which you can get for your civil actions. Food, rocks, science and culture. How valuable are they in comparison? Let's see. Expansion, Brodas, One Card, Autonomous Territory, on which you can see the ordering. So the most valuable is science, then rocks, food is valuable little less, and the less val valuable resource is a culture. But back to the question. What is the value of civil action. During round one, you can only take cards from a card row. You cannot do anything else. And if you will not take any leaders or any wonders, there are only a few of the yellow cards. So maybe let's look on them. All these yellow cards always give you exactly one resource. We can look on a stockpile, which gives you two, but it also will cost you two civil actions to produce these two. One to take it, not from this position, but from the other, and one to play it. The only exceptions, the only exception is engineering genius. The engineering genius can give you discount of two rocks, and that's also the reason why this card is so valuable. From this, we can deduct that frugality is less valuable than rich land and urban growth. And as you may remember, the science is more than rocks. So taking urban growth is probably a good idea because you will be able to produce your science faster. This is uh, not that easy as I am saying now, but we will come back to it in another episode. So as a rule of thumb, we can say that the value of a civil action in round one is about one resource. For the starting player in round two, there are still only civil cards from HA available, but there is another way how to utilize your civil actions. You can increase your population or build something. Let's play a few turns with one stipulation to better understand the value of civil actions and yellow cards. That stipulation is that no leaders and wonders can be taken from the card row. What will it look like? Let's go. So, only one option. What will do the computer? And now, back to our turn. So as I said, we can increase population, we can build something, and then we are back to taking yellow cards. Well, stockpile can be good because it will give us some resources. So remember, still only yellow cards can be taken or technologies. So quite normal first turn. We just increase the population and build a building. What will be next? Okay, it, it looks like computer knows what our stipulations are and we will not have many options. So I will play stockpile to give in some resources, increase population, build mine and gain some culture. Why not? Now we are waiting on a computer move. Who takes cartography for free? Uh, who programmed this artificial intelligence? I will play an event. Oh, 
Okay, another two rocks. And we are closely getting to my point. So, as you can see, without taking any wonders or leaders, we fast come to a situation we have plenty of resources, but we don't have many things which we can do with them. Here is another game, another example. We are in a third round. We will see an event and we can do something for cheaper. Okay, let's build a lab cheaper. Now I will increase population and what I should do now? If I only can take yellow cards, I pretty quickly run out of the options. Maybe I can build a temple, but it's not a good action at, at the beginning. I can take another yellow card to produce something. That's uh, one of the reasons why wonders are in a game. They serve as a place where you can invest your civil actions and rocks. It is even historically, historically accurate. In majority of your games, you will need to take HA Wonder or early H1 Wonder to have more options how to spend your actions and rocks. But of course, you can win a game without taking an HA or H1 Wonder. Mm. You can win even without taking any Wonder and Leader, not only against artificial intelligence. To measure the value of leaders, we need to count how many civil actions we need to be able to start using them. We can take the leader card from the card row for one action, or for two actions, maybe sometimes even for three actions, and then we will need another one action to elect the leader. Uh, but because we will get the civil action back when electing another leader from H1, we can skip this cost. We can ask ourselves a question, will this leader give us more than one or two science, one or two rocks? The answer is very often yes, and that's why you need serious reasons to skip the leader. So let's take Ashoka. When H1 cards come to the card row, the quality of yellow card is going up. The frugality from H1 gives us back to food. A breakthrough one gives you to science. Value of civil actions rises very quickly. In a round three or four, there are yellow cards all around with two times bigger benefits than earlier. But other utilization for civil action is still the same. Increase of population, one action. Build one step of a wonder, one action. This is the reason why early in the game, good players often use their actions for these things instead of picking other yellow cards from HA. So thank you for listening and if you have any questions or suggestions for the next topic, let me know in the comments. And until then, have fun and lead the best civilizations.